If you are currently using Photoshop, chances are it's because of layers. Now, the most important thing inside of layers and the most powerful tool are layer masks. Now, some people are a little bit confused about how they work, and that shouldn't be the case, because layer masks are actually very simple. By the end of this tutorial, you're going to completely understand exactly how they work and how to use them. On top of that, I'm going to give you seven tips for using layer masks that maybe you don't know all these tips. So what we're going to do now is we're going to erase away the confusion. And by the end of this video, you're going to become a layer mask expert. Hey, I'm Colin Smith from PhotoshopCafe.com, the very best place for you to learn Photoshop and Lightroom. Now, I know a lot of people use Lightroom and a lot of people use Photoshop and some people use both. And a lot of the reason for that is the power of layers and layer masks. Now, I'm curious, do you use Lightroom? Yes or no? Let me know in the comments right now. So what we're going to do is we're going to have a look at using layer masks in Photoshop. I'm going to show you a few things about them and then I'm going to give you seven tips for using layer masks. Oh, I figured a fitting image to use would be to use masks. And so forget about everything here right now in the layers panel. Let's just look at this. We've got a layer mask sitting above a layer of white. Now, if we were to use the eraser tool, that's the E key, by the way, and start erasing away different areas, we would see if we hide the white, what we're doing is just simply cutting out the image. Well, really, that's what layer masks do. We've essentially taken a pair of scissors and just cut our photograph. And it's very hard to go back and change our mind later. So let's not use the eraser tool. Instead, we're going to use layer mask. And so we go down to the layer mask and we just click on layer mask. Now you'll notice right here, we've got a new layer. And in fact, let me show you how to make it bigger. We're going to go down here under panel options and we're going to make this nice and huge. So there we go. Much easier to see, right? So now that we've created this layer mask, you can see that it's showing as a white box. Well, here's how layer masks work. It's very simple. When it's white attached to a layer mask, it doesn't do anything. If we want to cut through it rather than use the eraser, we use black. So we select the layer mask and you can tell it's selected because we see that little box around it. And also it's going to show us up here, layer mask. If we select the layer itself, you'll see the box around the layer and up here it won't say mask. So make sure you paint on the mask. We're grabbing black as our foreground color right there. So we're grabbing black and we're just going to paint with that black. And notice what's happening. As we paint with the black, it's revealing the white underneath. And if we hide that white, you see it's just painting it away. So we're just painting away with black. And notice we can see the black there on the mask, so that hides it. If we hit the X key and go back to the white brush and paint with white, it brings back the contents of that layer. So a layer mask essentially is as simple as that. We use black and we paint away that layer and we use white and it paints it back. And as we can see the checkerboard underneath, let's just turn the white on. There we go. And that's just showing the layer underneath. Okay. So I'm just going to fill this with white just to kind of show you. So now we fill that. It has no effect. Now if we invert it, which would be control or command I notice it hides the content of that layer entirely because it's all black. So let's go back to white again. If we grab a brush, let me grab the foreground color here and I'm going to put in 50% brightness. And that's hue saturation brightness, by the way. So if I type in 50, that gives me a 50% brush. Now, if I paint with that, what it's doing now is removing this to 50% opacity. And notice that's a 50% gray area and that's a 50% opacity. So the amount of the gray is directly proportional to the amount of the mask. So that means if we are 100% white, we're 100% opacity. If we are 0% white, which would be black, we're at 0% opacity. So if we fill this with 50% gray, notice the mask is 50. Now we have 50% transparency. If we go and we select maybe 10% brightness and click OK, and now we fill with this, notice now we only have 
10% opacity. So if you want to adjust a specific amount of opacity, you can do that with the brush. By the way, when I grabbed 50% gray here, it's similar to doing 50% up here on the opacity, but let me show you why I don't do 50% opacity. So if I paint with the 50%, yes, we are reducing it 50, but here's why I do it with the gray color rather than the brush. Because if I paint again with that brush, look, it's doing another 50, and now it's doing another 50, and now it's doing another 50. Rather than doing that, if we turn our opacity up to 100, and then we choose a 50% gray brush, now when we paint, we're going to get a consistent 50% across the board. See that? So now we don't have that weird uh, tearing, and it will never go brighter or darker than 50%. See that? We're always going to get 50. So that's why I use the gray color there rather than just using opacity, because I'm sure a few people had that question. All right, let's just fill this back again. So now rather than painting against this white, why don't we hide that white layer? In fact, I'll throw the white layer away just so there's no confusion. And now we want to paint on this mask with black. So if I paint with black, look what happens. And we can see the eyes kind of shine through underneath. Now I can make a selection and have a very hard edge on that if I wanted. But in this case, I'm just using a soft edge brush and it just kind of blends it in for us. I'm not trying to get everything perfect. But see if we go over the edges here, like let me show you. Just hit the X key and now we can paint back. Now we're painting with white. And notice that that removes that. So now we've got a nice, easy adjustment right there. So if I hide everything underneath, you can see we've cut through. And now it's showing the eyes underneath. In fact, I could even show the eyes of the lion if I wanted to do something even more exciting. So you can see that's how the layer masks are working. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hide this and we're going to go down into the face and we're going to create a new layer mask. Because now you already know if I paint with black, it shows underneath. If I paint with white, it brings it back. And if I choose, you know, 50% gray or some area of gray, it's going to create a blend between the two. So we're going to take that knowledge to our advantage. And now I'm going to create a gradient. I'm going to hit the D key first to reset the foreground and background color. And I'm going to choose the gradient tool. The first option in the gradient is foreground to background. I want to make sure it's set to linear, normal blending mode, and the opacity turned all the way up. Now, here's an interesting thing. If I click and drag now, I'm going to create a gradient and watch what happens. Now that I'm creating that gradient, you can see what's happening now is the black is hiding that layer and it's allowing to show through. But notice as that gradient is turning into shades of gray, it's creating a smooth blend. So we could do different things. And notice it's not destructive because we're just applying it to a layer mask. So we can try different things. We could, you know, go like that. We could go like this. We could go this way. You can see there's a lot of fun things that we could do with this. So what if we decided, you know, hey, let's do it like this. But I want to do a little bit of fine tune. Well, here's a great thing. We can mix these together. All we need to do is select the mask and we want to show our eyes. Well, remember, if we paint with white, I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger there. I can just paint my eyes back in see that and we can create this nice blend and now essentially we're making a lion woman and if I wanted to make the nose go down we could hit the X key and in this case I can drop the opacity down because I don't need a particular value I just want to paint just a little bit and I can just put a little bit of that hair down the nose if I wanted and notice what we're doing here. We're just painting that lion back in there, but just a little more gently. Now, if we wanted to get more aggressive, we could go kind of crazy like this. Let's turn it all the way up to 100. And I'm going to make a huge brush. And I'm just going to go down here and notice what's happening here. We're just painting that in. And now we're showing that little bit of a lion. Let's drop the brush down in size using the bracket keys. And I could go in here and I could just kind of blend that in. 
And if I feel like I've gone too far, just hit the X key and just paint back again with white. Okay, so looking into the tips, if I want to hide this mask, I hit the shift key and click on the mask and that will temporarily hide it. I'm going to use selections to help me get a better edge. So I'm going to grab the quick select tool and select this face. I'm going to shift click to turn the mask back on. I'm going to inverse the selection by hitting control shift I. And I'm going to paint with black to paint away at the edges to get a nice crisp edge. Now I can paint inside the face with white and the selection is going to give me a crisp edge. Now if we wanted to see the mask, if we hit the Alt or the Option key, we can click and that will show us the mask on the document. And of course just click back on the image and that will show us that mask. Now if I hit the backslash key, it will show the mask. As you can see the mask overlay and backslash will revert it back again. I want to hide that a little bit, so I'm going to make sure I'm painting with white. Grab this, and I want to do 10% opacity. I just tap the 1 key, and that will give me 10%. And I just want to kind of paint that back in a little bit. Now, notice these edges are a little bit hard. I'd like to soften those a little bit. So here's another tip. We can select that mask, and then choose the feather, and just grab a very small amount there. And notice as I add that, it just blends things in nice and smoothly. The other thing is I can invert this mask. And to invert the mask, I hit Control i on the mask. Or I can choose under the properties, Invert. So we can go for a completely different look right there. The next tip is we can load it as a selection. So if I hit the control key or command key and click on that mask, I can load that selection right there and use that for painting or masking different ways. And then finally, the last tip for using layer masks is layer blending modes. Layer blending modes can achieve incredible results very easily. And then if we go in here and we use blending modes, we can get all kinds of interesting results here by just changing the blending. Now I have another tutorial on blending modes and I'm gonna to link to that in the comments underneath. Also, I have a free ebook on layer blending modes and you can download that with the link underneath. Okay, I'm curious, how many of these layer mask tips did you already know? Were these all new or some of them new? Let me know in the comments underneath. So anyway, this shows you everything you need to know to get started using layer masks and you can see they're incredibly powerful and not as difficult as maybe you thought they were. If you like these type of tutorials, hit the subscribe button and that little bell notification icon right now and you'll get a new tutorial from me every single week. Now I just finished another one on how to use curves and layers. It's another fundamental kind of a tutorial and I think you might want to check that out. I'll give you the link to that underneath. Anyway, if you like this, smash that like button into dust because it really does help uh, boost the video inside of YouTube. So anyway guys, thanks for watching and until next time, I'll see you at the cafe. Mm -hmm.